Hello there. Sorry from 17 once again. This is Deus Ex, Mankind Divided. This is my Foxist of the Hounds walkthrough. Every video I say a different intro, it's just kind of the, the moral of this story, I guess. This is Mission 7. 7, like that. <laughs> the Rooker Extraction. I love this level, guys. I think this level's fantastic. It reminds me of Dread. It reminds me of Blomkamp movies. It reminds me of so many things, and I think they absolutely nailed the atmosphere here. The lighting, the visuals, the design, the details, the touches. the uh, So many wonderful things. Uh, one thing you're going to see in this walkthrough is I consult my map a lot. And I do this out of sheer stupidity. Uh, I don't really know where to go 100%. I've got an idea of where to go, but I don't know the layout because this is only my second playthrough. So I end up going in the wrong house here instead of the next one. And this game does an interesting thing where, do you notice how it doesn't populate the waypoint in the hood and it doesn't do it in the minimap? Well, it does, but you have to toggle it on. And I thought that it was an upgrade for, for Jensen's eyes. So I thought that because I was abstaining from picking certain upgrades, I wouldn't have that as a feature. So I'll be pausing the game and using that map a lot. Whereas if you go into the options of the game, it can be toggled on. And I find that to be the most baffling choice you could ever make in a video game. And it's not the only one. Reticle for your guns is turned off by default. So if you want reticle on to aim and shoot, and if you want the waypoint to show up like it does in modern games, you have to turn them on in the menus, and if you don't, you'll never have them. And I didn't realise that that's where they were, so I did all of this without. And uh, if I can, you know, alleviate some stress for you by telling you this, and you can go in and turn them on, then that's awesome, but... I have no idea why it would be set that way. I think it's the most baffling thing that I've seen all year, as far as gaming goes. Complete archetypal linchpin mechanics that are not turned on. That to me is is weird, but cool too, because it's very specific. I'm going to sequence break right now, guys, because we're going to be giving a mission, uh, given a mission, sorry, not a mission, that's not even a word, to come and rob these two guarded areas. If I do it before we go and get the mission, the guard will not trigger his path, and he'll not come and put pressure on us. So I can hack this door, I can pick up the medication, and then I can climb on the roof and pick up the other medication. And then when we go and we speak to the merchant, who is the mission that we're up on now, he will immediately give us access to where we need to go, circumventing that little fetch quest, which I think is fantastic design. So touche uh, whoever it was that enabled us to do this, because I think it's great. Up here, watch this, by the way. You mentioned how I said mantling on this game can be a work of art. This is why. It's not that... You know, the game is horrible all the time. It's just every so often, Jensen is, is like he's drunk. It's, he just doesn't climb things right. He doesn't detect things right. He does all. He does everything but what you want. And in a game where it can be the difference between being spotted and not being spotted on an achievement that's all about not being spotted, it makes a difference. But if you move up here, you're going to trigger this guy to get off the crate, and he's the dude who patrols. But because we've gone in those warehouses, he's not going to bother us now, so we can run up these stairs, and we can hit the the objective. If you do the side mission for Collar to get the Calibrator, you're going to owe a favour to a Russian and he wants you to kill this guy. On my first playthrough I ended up getting myself in that situation and of course I was doing pacifist practice so I wasn't killing people. I wasn't sure what I was meant to do and when I went back to the city the Russian you know warned me saying this is what's going to happen for breaking your promise and then I had never saw him again. <laughs> like there was no um, repercussions of that action so I'm not too sure what I was supposed to do as far as you know to be punished but it would have been interesting to see I expected an ambush and in the game's defense the reason that this game is easier than the last Deus Ex is because there are no instances where you get ambushed and it's alerted and everybody's looking for you so you have to sneak through really alert people there are no moments where you have to take down massive mechs or robots that take EMP grenades and are absolutely lethal death machines there are no moments like that in this game. The game lets you commit to stealth, and I think that that's very admirable. Except for at the end, where it's like, fuck you in the mouth, and I think that's disgusting. Uh, did you see that then, though? That's me showing you that the, the limits of the dash. The Icarus dash should have allowed me to skip this climbing and go straight up onto that next platform, and it would have looked cool. But instead, I look like an idiot aiming at things that don't work, and then conceding with my tail between my legs to climb a ladder. It's just the way the game works. What wonderful lighting in this area too. It's a very pretty level. So, I just hit the elevator. It's going to enable us to walk on this path. We're going to get conversed by our favourite uh, punk rock 
Doctor Dude. He's, he's very angry at me for not doing the side mission. One thing you'll notice in this game is that this, the, the NPCs are pushy, and I really, really don't like that as a design. If you're doing exploring, and there's a mission that needs to be doing, like a, a main mission, they'll be like, where are you, Jensen? What are you doing, Jensen? Jensen, are you coming? All the time. It's way too much. You've designed a beautiful game. Let the player explore it without having their ear chewed off. It's, it's really annoying, and it happens a lot. And it's one of those, I appreciate what they're doing. I really do. They're enabling it for the person who puts the game down and hasn't played for a week, who comes back with no idea of what he's meant to do, no no idea of how he's meant to realise what he's meant to do. So the game's like, please come to me. You know, it's, it's, it's reminding you and making sure you always know what's expected of you, and I think that that's great. But it's annoying as fuck when I'm trying to rob somebody's house who's unrelated to the entire quest, and you're telling me I need to come into the office. That is annoying. But it's just video games, guys. What can we do? So this is tricky. Wait after that checkpoint, climb the ladder. Up here is one person. She'll always move there. She'll always look over there. We're going to come up here. You can either hack these mines and defuse them, or you can go through them with the cloak. Once you're on this section, if you Icarus up to the landing, you should be able to do this quickly enough to uh, get into cover, and nobody should challenge you. And then you can move forward, and what we're going to do is we're going to be using our mobility to get high. We're going to jump across this gap, but you want to save before you do it, or you can use the Icarus, because the Icarus is good in this, because it's horizontal. And then this next one, this jump here, is so fiddly, it's not even funny. Jensen sometimes grabs, other times he doesn't. So you'll notice, look at the distance I get with this. Do you see how far I just did that? That's how high you should be able to go with it, but you can't. It's very sad, but it's true. You'll notice a guy just heard us then. So if you're conscious of people hearing your footsteps, you should crouch. Crouching on this game is incredibly powerful. However, if you fall from a distance and you land next to somebody, even in a crouch, they will hear you because it's not going to fix every solution. But in my opinion, it almost completely negates the need for the quiet legs. The quiet legs is good as an add-on or an extra touch, but I've never needed it and I will never use it in this walkthrough. In my opinion, I think there should have been a greater penalty to incentivize the use for those legs. Because when you turn those legs on, it's like turning the cloak on, and I know which is more useful, you know what I mean? So I don't know why you would ever favor quiet legs over cloak. And I can appreciate some scenarios where maybe you can sprint and you can get speed is king, but cloak is, is the emperor and it works, dude. So that person will always turn as you move towards them if you're on this trajectory that I'm moving. So if you hit the cloak just as they turn around, they will never see you. And then when you get to the bottom of this, you want to save because the next sequence can be a bit finicky too. So there's the wonderful Icarus landing. Absolutely adore that mechanic. Never, ever hold that stun attack when you're out in public because you'll knock out the entire village and everybody will be scared of you. I didn't realize that it said do an attack. I thought it just meant initiate Icarus so I didn't die from the fall. So at the very beginning of the game, I jumped out of my apartment. I came down like a bullet and about nine people went flying and everybody was afraid of me. The police came. It was crazy. Um... But this is interesting. This guy's going to move just there, and we're going to move past him, hit the cloak, and then we're going to go just over here, turn it off, get some back. He's not going to see us because his path doesn't dictate. He looks this way. He has his back to us. As soon as the guy behind you starts moving this way, you'll notice it on the alert meter. So I'll get into this corner, and what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to show you a little tip here. If you ever need battery power and you don't want to use an item or you don't have an item, use an upgrade. The upgrade will refresh your energy. A lot of games have this as a system, so if you know to look for it, you can do it in a lot of different titles. It's incredibly useful, but not all games work that way, so you need to be aware if you're going to try something like that to test whether or not it works. This game works perfectly for that. If you're ever in, I assume it works the same with life. If you don't have any healing kits, and you're injured and you want your life back, and I think it regenerates in this game, but I wouldn't know because hopefully, I'm not too sure if I achieved it, but this should be a no damage run. Oh, by the way, here's the, here are the choices to win the dialogue. They're trimmed together, guys, so I don't have any context for them. Just, just parrot and you'll win. I've made a separate video for these if you're struggling with the full dialogue in it for people. I'm going to pop those up soon. But uh, here are the choices, anyhow. You'll notice his hair didn't load correctly on this, this run, too. He normally has this really messy kind of spidery hair that's all over the place and stressed. 
and uh, it didn't load on this particular one. Or maybe, I don't know, this version of this guy had, had a haircut today. I don't know. I think it was just a, a graphical error. But a fun one, because he looks cool. You know, he looks like some kind of Jason Statham ex-con. It's really good. But once he, Fox, dies, uh, we can come into this room. We can pick up some stuff. I'm looking for an EMP grenade, if you're wondering, guys. Um, and then you can hit these... This, this slat, and we can continue to escape. Did I mention I really like this level? This level is so well put together, it flows, dude. And certain levels just don't flow. Oh, look at it, it's telling me to use uh, the gel stuff. <laughs> oh, bless it. So I'm going to fall down here, because I think it's the easier path. Yeah, definitely. And if I could hack, but... I'm not going to be prioritizing hacking on, on this particular walkthrough. On my first run through, my hack was maxed and it came in handy about twice. Don't get me wrong, it enabled me to go into a lot of places I shouldn't have gone to, but none of them were essential, so I decided to drop it for the purposes of this. And another ability that I picked up too, oh that's a good thing to tell you too guys. If you touch people when you're in the cloak it will alert them so you, you can get close but you can't get too close. If you open a door on this game people react to it, which I think is amazing. How many games have you played where people don't react to you doing shit? If a door opens by itself, you're gonna look, and they do in this game, so... I really, really like that it's there, but I also really hate it, because it makes exploiting the AI a lot more difficult. All we're gonna do here, guys, is intelligent use of cloak, get around here, keep on crouched, move onwards, uh, as long as you get to this left corner, nobody will be able to see you, and I recommend you save coming up, because this is a bit tricky with this next drop down. Depending on how far you drop will depend on how how you move and if you hit the beam. If you do this incorrectly, you'll drop into the middle of a conversation and get immediately alerted. I got stuck, so I can't actually move now. I need to kind of jump. And jumping makes noise, so I was very trepidatious to do it. But if you miss that and you fall all the way down, you can get yourself into an interesting spot. Um, there's two people talking just to my left and there's a person above me. You can see them on the map. Um, when they're hollow circles, it means they're not on the same level as you. When they are filled in, it means you're on the same level as them. They heard me dropping down, but I used the cloak the moment I landed, and now they're going to come and patrol. So this is when things get a little trickier, but if you've got, you know, the legs, the uh, quiet legs, if you use that, they won't hear you. I'm not afraid of these people, though, because the stealth in this game is, is very empowering, and once you realise just how powerful you are when it comes to stealth, you should be bold. You should have confidence in your movements. Hit the door, go into cover, and then we can continue for the rest of the level. And it's one of those really uh, kind of dishonest cutscenes coming up where we've done all of this without being seen once. Yet in the cutscene, everyone's chasing his guns blazing and they all know we're here, which I always find delicious. But I think this is the end. I'm going to run, and I'm going to jump, and I'm going to do the Icarus dash, and it's going to trigger the cutscene. And it looks pretty sweet. Boom! But that's the end of the video guys, so thank you very much for watching, there are my bonuses. Notice how it's a smooth operator but not ghost, even though we got ghost previously when people were suspicious. So why didn't I get ghost? I don't know guys. This game is bizarre, I'll never understand it. Um, but thank you for watching, and you take care now.